Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about DNA libraries. DNA libraries are an integral part of genetic engineering. In this video, we will discuss what are the different types of DNA libraries, what are they, and about their construction. A DNA library is a collection of DNA fragments that have been cloned into vectors so that researchers can identify and isolate the DNA fragment that interests them for their study. We all know gene sequences are arranged in genome in a random fashion and selecting or isolating a gene is a big task, especially when the genomic sequences are not known. A small portion of genome is transcribed to give mRNA whereas a major portion remain untranscribed. Hence, there are two ways to represent the genomic sequences information into multiple fragments in the form of a library. So the DNA library is of two types, genomic libraries and cDNA libraries. Genomic libraries are collection of DNA fragments that together represent the entire or nearly entire genome of the individual from which the DNA was derived. Or a genomic library represents complete genome in multiple clones containing small DNA fragments. Depending upon organisms and the size of genome, this library is either prepared in a bacterial vector or in a yeast artificial chromosome. DNA stands for complementary DNA. It is a form of DNA synthesized artificially by messenger RNA that serves as a template in the presence of reverse transcriptase enzyme. In most eukaryotic genomic DNA contain many genes composed of exons and introns. Exons as we all know are the coding sequences while introns make the non-coding part of the genome. Generally, during gene expression, sense DNA sequences transcribe into an mRNA sequence before producing a protein. When making a mature mRNA, a splicing mechanism removes all the intron sequences. Hence, mature mRNA does not contain introns or the non-coding sequence. Now, when we are talking about genomic libraries and cDNA libraries, now what are the similarities between this genomic DNA or cDNA? Well, genomic DNA and cDNA are the two forms of nucleic acid. Both contain deoxyribonucleotide monomers and both possess coding sequences of genes. Now, what is the difference between the genomic library and cDNA library? Well, genomic library is a natural form of nucleic acid, while cDNA is an artificially constructed form of nucleic acid. Therefore, this is one of the difference between the genomic library and cDNA library. Moreover, DNA represents the genome of many living organisms. It composes the coding and the non-coding sequences. However, when making the mRNA, all the intron sequences are excised since they are not important for the formation of protein. Hence, mRNA sequences do not contain introns. These mRNA sequences act as a template when synthesizing cDNA. Hence, cDNA does not contain introns. Accordingly, genomic DNA contain introns but cDNA uh, library does not contain introns. So this is the primary difference between the genomic library and the cDNA library. Let us now discuss about the preparation or construction of genomic library. As we have discussed, a genomic library represents complete genome in multiple clones including small DNA fragments. Now depending upon organism and size of the genome, the library is either prepared in bacterial vector or in yeast artificial chromosome. And accordingly, the following steps are followed. 
The first one obviously is isolation of genomic DNA, then generation of the suitable size DNA fragments, cloning in suitable vectors, of course, depending on the size, then transformation in suitable host. The first step is the isolation of genomic DNA. So for isolation, the lysis of the cell with detergent containing lysis buffer is used. Incubation of the cells with digestion buffer containing protease to release the DNA, genomic DNA from the DNA protein complex. As we know, the DNA is always bound to proteins inside the nucleus. Then the isolation of the genomic DNA by absolute alcohol precipitation. After that, the DNA has to be purified. The purification of the genomic DNA with phenol chloroform mixture. Phenol chloroform mixture has two phases, aqueous phase and the organic phase. In this state, phenol denatures the remaining protein and keep the protein in the organic phase. The genomic DNA represented in the aqueous phase is again precipitated with absolute alcohol. Now the genomic DNA is analyzed on agarose gel plate and if, if it is a good, uh, we have done it, a good preparation is done, then the whole DNA will be shown as an intact band on the agarose gel. The next step is the generation of genomic DNA into suitable size. Genomic DNA can be digested with DNA cutting enzyme. In addition, genomic DNA can be fragmented using mechanical steering also. Next step is the cloning into suitable vectors. The suitable vectors to prepare genomic library can be selected based on size of the fragments of genomic DNA and carrying capacity of the vector. In the case of fragments generated by restriction enzymes, vectors can be digested with the same enzyme and put for ligation to get clones. In one of the approaches, a adopter molecule can be used to generate sticky ends alternately and endonucleus can be used to generate sticky ends. Post ligation, clones are transformed in a suitable host to get colonies. A suitable host can be a bacterial stain or an yeast. Once a genomic library has been created, it is screened to identify the gene of interest. One of the most common library screening technique is called colony hybridization. In the process of genetic uh, library construction, as I told you, phase vectors are used. Then the process of identification of gene of interest involved is called the plague hybridization. Now let us discuss about cDNA library. cDNA library or complementary DNA library represent mRNA population present at a particular stage in organisms with multiple clones containing small DNA fragments. Now let us discuss about the construction of cDNA library. The cDNA library construction begins with the isolation of mRNA. Then the preparation of a complementary DNA fragments. Then the cloning of the DNA fragments into suitable host and then transformation into suitable host. The first step is the isolation of mRNA. The structure of a typical mRNA is given in the figure. It has a cap structure at the 5' end, coding sequence and a poly A tail at the 3' region. The nucleotide A form two hydrogen bonding with nucleotide T and the sparing is very, very specific. Exploring this feature, mRNA population can be isolated from RNA pool using a poly T affinity column. The steps in mRNA isolation from the cell 
involves the following steps. Number one, the release of total RNA either by lysis vector containing detergent or by homogenization in the case of heart tissue. The next is the mixing of poly T containing bits with the total RNA preparation. Now, due to mutual exclusive affinity of mRNA binds to the poly T bits. Then the washing the bits with washing buffer to remove the non-specific cross-contamination species. Then the mRNA can be eluted from the bits and its purity can be checked on the polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Once the mRNA is isolated, the next step is preparation of complementary DNA. Multiple approaches have been developed to prepare complementary DNA from isolated mRNA. The first step is, the first is synthesis uh, with the reverse transcriptase enzyme. The second step is removal of the RNA template. And the third is the second strand synthesis of the DNA. Homopolymer tailing method exploits the presence of poly A tail present on the mRNA to synthesize first DNA strand followed by degradation of the RNA template and synthesis of the second strand. So the process follows. First of all, an oligo DT primer is used with mRNA as template to prepare the first strand of the DNA with the help of reverse transcriptase and DNTPs. The second step, for after the synthesis of the first strand, terminal transferase is used to add C nucleotides on the 3' prime end of both mRNA and the newly synthesized first strand of the DNA. Then, in the third step, the DNA-RNA hybrid is loaded on an alkaline sucrose gradient. This step will hydrolyze, will, fall, will allow RNA and the full recovery of the cDNA. The next step, an oligo DZ primer is used with the cDNA as template to prepare the second strand of the DNA with the help of reverse transcriptase and the DNTPs. After the synthesis of the double-stranded DNA, now the cloning of the cDNA with the vector has to take place. The cDNA is ligated with suitable vector to generate clones. Then is the transformation to get colonies. Post ligation, clones are transformed in a suitable host to get colonies. A suitable host can be a bacterial stain or yeast. Application of gene libraries To obtain desired gene sequences, for analysis, amplification, cloning, and expression. Once the sequence is identified, probes and primers, etc., can be synthesized for further research, such as hybridization reaction, blotting technique, and for PCR reactions. Knowledge of gene sequences can be helpful in gene therapy also. Isolated genes can be used to synthesize gene products such as human gene products in prokaryotes.